Blueberries. One sunny autumn day, Berry and Dolly went into the forest to pick blueberries. Their friends Flutter the butterfly and Eddie the potato beetle went with them. I'm going to pick the most blueberries, Eddie announced. Look, this bush is full of ripe blueberries, the little snail said. I'm going to pick them all. But Eddie jumped in front of Berry and quickly picked the biggest berries. This bush is full of berries too, Dolly told the others. But the little potato beetle was faster again. By the time Dolly got to the bush, he'd already picked the best of the berries. Eddie, that's not fair. Don't pick all the berries, the little ladybird complained. Then the friends came to a stream. Let's build a bridge over the stream. I know exactly how. Let's all go and bring that big log here. They all had to work hard to pull the heavy log over the stream. The little friends made a super bridge together. It's done, Flutter sighed. Look, there's another blueberry bush with lots of berries on it. That was Eddie's cue. I'm going to get there first. Those blueberries are all mine, he shouted triumphantly. But he pushed past Flutter so hard that she slipped and fell into the stream. Help! Don't worry, Flutter. Hold on to me, Dolly shouted and stretched her hand out to the floundering butterfly. But the water flowed too fast and Flutter couldn't reach Dolly. Berry picked up a long stick. Grab the stick, Flutter, he shouted. But this didn't work either, because the river started to carry the little butterfly away. Eddie, help! We've got to pull poor Flutter out of the water, Dolly yelled. And they pulled the soggy butterfly out of the stream. Oh my! I'm so cold! I'm very, very cold! And my little wings are soaked through! Here, take my jumper. It's all my fault. I'm so sorry, Flutter. That's very nice of you. But you'll catch a cold too without your jumper. We should collect a large pile of leaves and wrap Flutter up in them. Berry, Dolly and Eddie gathered a big bunch of burdock leaves and covered the shivering butterfly with them. I'm still very cold and my wings don't work. Look, they're all wet and ruined. Flutter started to sob. The sun took pity on the weeping butterfly and came down close to warm her wings. Flutter's wings were soon beautifully dry and as good as new. Hooray! I'm all dry and warm at last. Thank you, sun, Flutter said with a smile. I'm so sorry, Flutter, Eddie said. I promise I won't pick all the blueberries next time. I want you to have all the ones that I've picked. Thank you, Eddie. Why don't we share them instead? Let's hurry home and bake a blueberry pie. The friends all walked back to Flutter's house and got to work straight away. They picked all the leaves off and gave the blueberries a good wash. Spoons stirred and pans clattered until the kitchen was filled with the sweet smell of delicious blueberry pie. The yummy dessert was soon ready. Stanley the stag beetle, Balthazar the bee and Bubble the baby beetle came along to join the feast. The forest friends all sat around the table and chatted late into the night. The Star House One summer evening, Berry and Dolly were sitting playing cards in Dolly's house when they spotted a bright light over the hill. 
What was that? Berry asked. It looked like a shooting star. A shooting star? Let's go and take a closer look, Dolly suggested. Berry and Dolly held hands and walked in the direction of the strange light. Look over there, Berry! The little snail boy's mouth fell open in surprise. Right on the top of the hill stood a house the shape of a star. Where did that come from? It wasn't there the other day, Berry whispered. You stay here and I'll run and tell the others, Dolly whispered back and she flew off to tell Balthazar, Flutter and Stanley. When they were all together, the group of friends crept slowly towards a peculiar house. Stanley knocked on the front door. A shy girl popped her head around the door. She had long hair that sparkled with tiny stars and golden wings that glistened in the darkness. Berry was the first to speak. Who are you and how did you get here? But the girl didn't say a word. Can we help you? No answer again. The girl just stood there and said nothing. All right then, if you're not going to speak, then don't. Come on, let's go home. Wait a minute, Dolly said. Perhaps she can't speak. She can't speak? The others asked back in amazement. Dolly picked up a stick and scripted a star on the ground. Then she handed the stick to the girl. The little girl reached for the stick and started to draw. A little harp? Dolly asked and the little girl nodded. You've lost it? Flutter asked and the little girl pointed to the window. It fell out of the window? The little girl nodded again. I don't understand, Balthazar grumbled. I understand, Dolly said. She lives up in the sky, but she dropped her harp out of the window and she's come down here to look for it. Then let's help her. Balthazar suggested. Don't worry, we'll find it, they all told her, and they hurried off into the forest to search for her missing instrument. I can't find it, Berry said with a sorry sigh. I've looked in all the bushes. I can't find it either, and I've looked absolutely everywhere, Balthazar added. I'm going to take a look higher up. Flutter told them, and she flapped up into the trees. Here it is! Here it is! I found it! The little butterfly girl soon shouted. Flutter lifted a little golden harp out of the canary's nest. She carefully handed the harp back to the star girl. The little girl flew back into the house and closed the door. She lifted a sparkling star out of her hair and gave it to Flutter. Is that for me? The little butterfly girl asked in surprise and the star girl nodded. Then she sat in the window and started to play her harp. And as she played, the star house began to lift higher and higher. She's flying up into the sky, Dolly said with her eyes wide in wonderment. Soon it looked as tiny as all the other twinkling stars in the night sky. It's a shame that she had to go, Stanley sighed. Flutter took very good care of her twinkling star. She kept it in a little box and only wore it in her hair on very special days. It always reminded her of the little girl playing the harp in her star house, high up in the sky. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Witches. It was a warm summer day and Berry, Dolly and their friends were talking about witches. Do you really think witches exist? Balthazar the bee asked. And they fly around on broomsticks at night. I'm not sure, Berry mumbled. Then Berry and Dolly decided to walk home. Why don't we come back here later? We might see some witches, the ladybird suggested.
They packed themselves a tasty picnic and went back to the meadow. They stared at the sky for a long time, but nothing happened. Come on, Dolly, let's go home. I don't think witches are real. Dolly stopped and stared. Berry, I just heard a strange noise from behind that tree. Oh, Berry, the leaves are moving. The two friends hugged each other in fright. A witch suddenly flew out and Berry and Dolly screamed. Then another witch appeared in the sky. Run, Berry, run and hide. And they ran as fast as they could. The two of them hid behind a bush. Oh, Dolly, it's too bad our friends aren't here with us. Just then the two witches landed, took off their capes and hats and turned to smile. But your friends are here. It was us, Flatter and Balthazar. This made Dolly very mad. Really? You were the witches? It was very mean of you to scare us like that. It was only meant to be a joke, Balthazar explained. Berry was angry too. It was a very bad joke. You'll be sorry you did this. And the two friends stomped off home. We should play a joke on them now, Berry. Do you think we should scare them too? That's it, Dolly exclaimed. I've got an idea. Flutter and Balthazar were left standing in the meadow. What should we do now? They felt a bit ashamed. Maybe it wasn't such a good idea after all. Berry and Dolly ran to the ladybird's house and dressed up as little devils. They put black clothes on with black hats and added red horns to make themselves look like real devils. Hurry, Dolly! Berry was impatient. I can see them coming. They quickly jumped behind a bush and waited for Flutter and Balthazar to get close. Then they jumped out and scared the living daylights out of their friends. Help! Devils! The butterfly and the bee screamed. Now do you see how bad it is when someone scares you? The little snail said. What? Is that you, Berry? That was a really nasty thing to do. Nasty thing? Your witches were much scarier, Berry shouted. That's not true. The devils were scarier. That's enough, Dolly told them off. Stop this silly arguing. Let's be friends. We promise never to do it again. But you have to promise not to scare us either. You're right, the others nodded. Do you want to try the devil's hats on? Dolly asked. Yes, please. You can try our witch's hats on if you like and sit on our broomsticks. Whippy! This is super! Berry whooped. We're flying just like witches. Yes! Balthazar agreed, like real witches. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Butterfly Girls One spring day, Flutter the Butterfly Girl was picking wild flowers in the meadow. She plaited them into a crown and placed it on her head. Then, from nowhere, she heard an unfamiliar tinkling laughter. She looked right and she looked left, but she could not see anyone. Suddenly, seven butterfly girls flew out from behind a tree. Come with us, they giggled. OK, Flutter said and flew to join them. The butterfly girls were all pretty, but very naughty. They loved to play tricks on people they met. The first was Alfonso. Give me back my violin! The cricket shouted because one of the flying butterfly girls had snatched it out of his hands and flown off with it. She played music on it surprisingly well. Give it back! Alfonso complained. 
The butterfly girl handed the violin to another butterfly girl, who handed it to another, and they all made fun of the poor cricket. Flutter didn't like this teasing. In the end, the butterfly girls gave him back his violin and flew on. They rested on a blossoming tree and stuffed their pockets with sweetly scented and brightly coloured pollen. Then they flew over the boys playing a game of badminton. Look, Stanley, said Eddie. They're so pretty. Balthazar Bubble, Eddie and Stanley stood staring up at the heavenly creatures with their mouths wide open. But they were not happy for very long. The butterfly girls turned their pockets out and covered the boys in pollen. It made all the beetle boys sneeze terribly. The butterfly girls chuckled and their laughter tinkled in the gentle breeze. They flew on so quickly that Flutter could hardly keep up. Flutter panted and rested on the top of a lilac bush. Come with us. We're going to fly over to the other side of the hill, all the way to the waterfall. It's so beautiful. You'll see. One of them chimed. No, I shan't go with you, Flutter said firmly. I live here. I like my friends. And I don't like playing naughty tricks on them. You go, but I'm staying here where I belong. OK, well, all the best, they called back and flew away. They flew on to new places where they stunned those that they met with their dazzling beauty and then played naughty tricks on them. Flutter watched them go for a while and then smiled as she turned and headed back home. But before she got home, she paid a visit to the cricket. She was happy to see that Alfonso was merrily playing his violin again. Stanley, Balthazar, Eddie, Bubble and Berry were playing hopscotch and they shouted to Flutter to come and join them. The butterfly girl was happy to see that they had all managed to wash off that sticky pollen. Berry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Starship It was Christmas Day and Berry, Dolly, Balthazar, Flutter, Stanley and Bubble were walking home after playing snowballs. Let's all go to my house and we can decorate the little Christmas tree in my garden. What a lovely idea, the others all cheered. In the meantime, Flutter had an idea and she whispered it into Dolly's ear. That's not fair. Don't keep secrets. Yes, tell us too. It's mean to keep secrets. Oh, it's not that sort of secret. In fact, it's not a secret at all. Then tell us what it is. We can't tell you, because it's going to be a surprise. I've got to go now because of the surprise, but I'll be back soon. Dolly put a plate of fresh fruit bread on the table and the little friends all tucked into a feast. It's really delicious said Berry with a smile. Dolly then produced coloured paper, scissors, glue and ribbons and put them on the table. Everyone got quickly to work. They cut star, moon, heart and flower shapes out of the paper and threaded them onto a long ribbon. 
Flutter returned just as it was getting dark. Now tell us what the secret is, Balthazar said. No, I still can't tell you, the butterfly girl said secretively. I'm going to go home in that case. All right, we'll decorate the little Christmas tree outside and then I'll tell you everything, OK? OK, the boys all agreed. They took the ribbon outside and carefully wound it around the little Christmas tree. It looks lovely, Bubble whispered sweetly. They all gathered around the tree and began to sing. Little Christmas, lovely Christmas, little Christmas, lovely Christmas. Look, what's that light high up in the sky? Maybe it's a comet, said Bubble. But they didn't have to guess any longer because the light began to descend and they could see it was a star house. And there, waving to them from the window, was their old friend, the star girl. So that was the secret, Stanley cheered. But how did you manage to invite her here? I flew up to the moon and asked it to look for the star girl, Flutter told him. Just then the star girl opened up a bag and twinkling stars flew out. First the stars danced around the Christmas tree. Then they flew high up into the night sky before coming back down to the ground and clustering together to make a starship with a long staircase at the front. The friends carefully climbed up into the starship. The star girl began to strum on her harp and the starship flew up and up and around the whole forest. They all had a super view of all the houses down on the ground and they even saw Harry Hedgehog's house with him inside sleeping his way through the chilly winter. It's so beautiful, Balthazar said dreamily. They eventually landed back outside Dolly's house. The star girl bowed politely and waved to show that she had to be off on her way. Dolly suddenly had a super idea. She flew up to the top of the Christmas tree, took the pretty ribbon off and placed it on top of the star house. The harp music made the star house slowly lift off the ground. That really was a super surprise, Flutter, Bubble said. We'll never forget this Christmas night, Stanley announced to all. Alfonso's Fiddle One autumn day, Alfonso the Cricket stood happily playing his fiddle in the mushroom field. The forest friends were all enjoying the lovely music. The little ants were playing football on the hill. But, oh dear, the ball bounced away and knocked the fiddle clean out of Alfonso's hands. Alfonso <laughs> shouted in horror. My fiddle! My fiddle's broken! And then he burst into tears. He was sobbing so loudly that everyone came to see what the fuss was all about. Alfonso pointed angrily at the spotty ball. That ball! That ball is to blame! And those naughty ants! Where am I going to get a fiddle from now? He picked his broken fiddle up, went into his house and slammed the door shut behind him. Alfonso! Alfonso, come out! I'm sure we can help you! Berry pleaded. But Alfonso didn't want to see anybody. His friends sat sadly in the mushroom field and didn't know what to do. Then Dolly had an idea. I know! Let's make Alfonso a new fiddle! Yes, let's make a new fiddle! Flutter the butterfly nodded. I know who can help us! We have to find Charlie the click beetle. He made Alfonso's first fiddle. The band of friends set off and walked and walked until they reached a blue house. They knocked on the door. A tiny, timid beetle popped his head out. He wore a blue hat and had beautiful dark blue wings. Who are you? he asked. 
Dolly told Charlie the whole story. Oh, but don't be sad. If that's your problem, I'm happy to help. Alfonso will be playing music on his new fiddle in no time at all. The click beetle gave everybody a job to do. Some collected wood for the body of the fiddle, while others gathered grass for the strings. Now he had everything he needed, Charlie got to work. He sawed, sanded, polished and waxed. And then, like a little miracle, the new fiddle was ready. Can I try it? Dolly asked. No, it's Alfonso's instrument, Flutter told her. But I want to have my own musical instrument, Dolly sulked. Me too, me too, the little ants shouted. Quiet, said Charlie. Why don't you all start an orchestra? A great big orchestra. Like a music band? And everybody could have their own instrument? That's a very good idea. The first thing they made was a harp for Dolly. Stanley the stag beetle got a double bass and Eddie the potato beetle had a cello. Berry made a trumpet out of a lily. Morris the Maybug made a horn from a honeysuckle flower. The big spider used horse chestnuts and acorns for drums, while Zephyr and Leapy made cymbals out of pebbles. Charlie carved flutes from birch twigs for the ants. Flutter the butterfly got a lute, and Balthazar the bee got a zither. Bubble the baby beetle played a triangle. They all had a quick practice and then headed for Alfonso's house. Alfonso heard the music and looked out of his window to see where it was coming from. He was surprised by what he saw. Please, Alfonso, the little ant began. Don't be mad at us for breaking your fiddle. We'd like you to have this new one as a present. Charlie made it. Alfonso began to play straight away and the sound of his fiddle filled the forest once more. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Kindergarten. One autumn morning, Dolly knocked excitedly on Berry's door. Come quickly, Berry, or we'll be late. Berry got ready and the two friends held hands and walked to the nursery together. Lots of little children were gathered in the playground. They were all so happy to see each other. There was Balthazar the bee, Flutter the butterfly, Stanley the stag beetle, Eddie the potato beetle, Zephyr the dragonfly, Alfonso the cricket, Leapy the grasshopper and Bubble the baby beetle. Mrs Bumblebee patiently guided everybody into their classrooms. The little, middle and top children went into different rooms. Bubble was in the little group. He waved to Berry and Dolly from the doorway. The day started with exercises. After breakfast, the children made beautiful pictures using the leaves they collected in the woods. When everybody had finished, Mrs Bumblebee gathered the children in a circle. She taught them lots of songs and games. The children all danced around. Then it was playtime. Mrs Bumblebee sat in a rocking chair and watched the children. Berry and the boys ran straight over to the car box and started playing cars. They built ramps and tunnels. Can I join in, boys? Dolly asked. She was holding a broken red car. Oh no, Dolly, you can't play cars with that old thing, Berry told her. And anyway, cars are for boys, not girls. That made Dolly cry. The boys don't want to play with me, she told Flutter. Flutter, Leapy and Zephyr quickly cheered her up. Come and play with us. We're playing with dolls. The girls dressed their dolls in pretty dresses. 
fed them and rocked them to sleep. Dolly liked this game a lot. Then Berry got into an argument with Morris the Maybug. You keep knocking my car over. It's not fair. You're a cheat. That's not true. You're a cheat, replied Morris. That's it. I'm not playing with you anymore, Berry said sulkily and left the boys. Can I join in your game? Berry asked his friend Dolly. You can't play with us. It's a girl's game, Dolly sulked. But I brought this doll with me. It's got curly hair. I want to play with you. All right. Come and play with us. But now you have to let me play cars with you. Children, time to wash your hands. Mrs Bumblebee shouted, then go and sit down at the tables. Mrs Earwig, the dinner lady, dished up their dinner. When everybody had finished eating, Berry and Dolly collected up all the plates and glasses. Then the children had a little lie down, while Mrs Bumblebee read them a story. They all listened in silence, and a few of them fell fast asleep. When they got up, they all had a snack and went out into the playground. It was enormous and filled with all kinds of slides, climbing frames and swings, with a big wooden train in the middle. Barry and Morris quickly made friends again and played on the swings together. Dolly helped Bubble up the slide and caught him at the bottom. Bubble liked that a lot. The rest of the day flew by and soon the children were waving goodbye to each other. They couldn't wait for tomorrow to come. Fairy and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Fairy cards. Flutter the Butterfly Girl had a favourite card game. There were 16 cards in total, with pictures of pretty fairies in yellow, dark blue, pink, green, orange, red, purple and light blue dresses. No two cards were alike. The girls played with their fairy memory cards all the time. Stanley the Stag Beetle thought of a horrid joke to play. I could scribble on all the cards, he thought naughtily to himself, but he didn't dare do it. And so he tried to talk Balthazar into ruining the pretty cards. Balthazar, wouldn't it be funny to scribble all over Flutter's cards? The silly bumblebee gave a sneaky snigger and started to scribble on the cards with a dark green felt-tip pen. He drew moustaches, devil's horns, forks and a devil's tail on the pictures of the pretty fairies. The butterfly girl saw her cards that afternoon and screamed in horror. What happened to my lovely cards? She asked in a panicky voice and Flutter began to sob. What a horrid thing to do! Who could have done such a thing? Dolly asked, sounding terribly shocked. I know who did it. Balthazar's the only one with a dark green pen, Zephyr said in an angry tone. And I saw a green mark on his hand. Did you do this? Berry asked gruffly. That's not how it happened. Then how did it happen? <laughs> it's all Stanley's fault. It was his idea. But I didn't scribble all over the cards. <laughs> Flutter sobbed and Reggie Squirrel gave her a comforting cuddle. <laughs> the one who thought it up is naughty and the one who did it. Reggie Squirrel snapped strictly. You're both naughty. That was a really stupid joke, boys. Just imagine if we burst your football. Zephyr added. How sad would that make you feel? You're right, Stanley admitted. Flutter, we'll take your cards and see if we can get the scribbles off them. OK. OK, sniffed the butterfly girl. 
Stanley and Balthazar strolled sadly home and got straight to work trying to fix the cards they had scribbled all over. But the harder they tried, the more mess they made. The rubber made a hole in the paper and holes appeared all over the place. Barry, help! We couldn't rub the scribbles off and we've made a hole with all the rubbing. That's because you can't rub felt-tip pen out. Let's go and ask Dolly for help. Dolly, help! We can't fix the cards. I'm not going to help you. It was all your idea, so you have to put it right. Don't be so unfair. Please help, because Stanley and Balthazar really do want to make things better again. OK, come on in. The three boys sat down at the table. Hmm, they can't be fixed. The boys just sat and looked sad. We have to think of something else and I've already got an idea. Let's make new cards. Dolly placed pieces of white card on the table and took out her felt-tip pens. The boys cut the cards out and Dolly tried to copy the fairy pictures. Then Balthazar and Stanley carefully coloured the drawings in. All eight fairies were soon ready and of course there were two of each. You draw so nicely Dolly. Now give them to Flutter and say that you're sorry. Flutter, look! We've made you a whole new set of cards. Dolly drew them and we coloured them in. Please be friends with us again. Flutter flicked through all the cards and a smile spread across her face. Thank you, she said and invited the boys into the house. They were soon joined by Berry, Dolly and Zephyr and the friends played until late with the new pack of cards. And they were all the best of friends once again. The football match. One morning, Stanley was woken by the sound of someone knocking on his door. Stanley, it's me, Frank. The little stag beetle crawled out of his bed and saw Frank, the longhorn beetle. Hello there, Frank. It's super to see you, Stanley said, and the old pals hugged. I brought this for you. A football hooray! We'll need teams to play a proper game, Frank reminded him. Then we'll tell the others to come and we'll have proper teams, the stag beetle suggested. The two boys called on all the others to come and play football with them. They visited every house and by the time they had reached the edge of the forest, they had two teams. Alfonso agreed to be the referee. We should sew them football shirts, Rosita suggested. One team can play in blue and one team can play in red. The footballers spent the whole week training. We sewed these for you, Zephyr told them, and she handed the red and blue shirts to Stanley. Thank you, the two teams said together, and they slipped on their new football shirts. Dolly and Rosita set benches up, and the spectators all sat at the side of the pitch. Alfonso blew his referee's whistle, and the match began. That's it, run, Bubble, Stanley yelled. Here, pass it to me, Bubble shouted. Hooray! The blue team cheered as they all embraced. Come on, Reds! Come on, Blues! The crowd cheered. That's not fair, Frank. You can't touch the ball with your hand, the B-boy complained. Balthazar's right. Don't do it again, Frank. It's against the rules, the referee said. The match got very exciting. The Blues were leading three goals to two when the game stopped again. Frank tripped me up, Bubble complained. Yes, I saw that too, Alfonso agreed. I'll have to send you off if you break the rules again, Frank. Stanley's team looked set to win. Frank started to get crosser and crosser. I'm going to score a goal now, he shouted, and he pushed Berry so hard that they ended up falling over and Frank shouted out in pain. Ow, 
Ouch! My arm! The others all ran over. I'll run and fetch Dr Owl, Zephyr announced. If you hadn't hurt yourself so badly, I'd send you off, Alfonso said. Yes. I know, Frank said sadly, but my hand really hurts. Dr Owl was soon at the scene. Well, you've broken your arm. I'll have to put it in plaster and you'll have to keep it on for four weeks. You'll need to look after it and no running around. The blue team won the football match. We'll have to wait a while before we can play again, Stanley said, and he patted Frank on the back. Don't be sad, you'll soon be as fit as a fiddle again. I'm sorry that I broke the rules, Frank sniffed. I promise to play fairly when my arm has mended and we can have another good game of football. I think we should all decorate Frank's plaster cast, Dolly said with a grin. Let's go back to my house for a snack. The big crowd of friends all piled into Dolly's spotty house. They got her crayons out and drew all kinds of funny things on the Longhorn Beetle's plaster. I'm going to keep it as a souvenir after Dr Owl takes it off, Frank told them all. Then all the friends sat around the table and ate every last piece of the delicious sponge roll. Today. The Scooter One spring morning, Maurice the Maybug decided to make himself a scooter. He spent the whole day sawing, drilling and hammering. And when he was finished, he painted the scooter black. Then he hurried to show his super scooter to his friends. The boys were all playing basketball in the meadow. Berry, Stanley, Balthazar, Eddie, Bubble and Alfonso. Look at my new scooter. I made it all myself. Can I have a try? No one can borrow it. It's mine. I only want to try it for a minute. We'd like to have a go on it too, then we'll give it back. I'm not lending it to anyone, Morris told them again. The boys were so busy arguing that they didn't spot Eddie, who grabbed the scooter and rode off on it. Stop! Bring it back! It's my scooter and I didn't lend it to you! I'm not lending it to anyone! Eddie slowed down and Morris soon caught up with him. Give me my scooter back! Here you are, it doesn't go fast enough anyway. Not fast enough? Look at this! enough. You can hardly keep up with me, he shouted with a laugh, but he didn't see a big pothole in the middle of the road. Watch out, Morris! Balthazar, Berry and Stanley all shouted at once, but it was too late. Well, you've only got yourself to blame, Morris, Balthazar said in a snooty tone. What happened, Morris? Are you badly scratched? Why aren't you boys helping him? The rose beetle asked the others. It's all Morris's fault. It doesn't matter how it happened. He's really hurt himself and you should have helped. Come back to my house, Morris, and I'll clean those nasty scratches for you. Rosita sat Morris down and washed his wounds with a warm, wet cloth. It doesn't look that bad now. Morris started to sob. It was all my fault because I was mean to the others. If I hadn't been so mean, it wouldn't have happened. Then don't be mean next time. Thank you for all your help, Morris said as he left. It was nothing. You'll feel better soon. Morris limped all the way back to his house. The minute he got home, he jumped into bed and he was soon fast asleep. The little Maybug woke up the next morning with a wonderful idea. He got out his paints and brushes. I'm going to paint you pink. Look at you! I've brought this for you. Thank you for helping me yesterday. It looks lovely. Did you paint it? Rosita asked. Yes, I thought you wouldn't like it black. I love it. 
I'm going to ride it over to Dolly's house. Be careful, have a safe ride. Morris walked home and he was about to eat his lunch when he heard a knock at the door. Hello, Morris, Balthazar said first. We came to see if you're feeling better. Much better, thank you, Morris shrugged. I promise that I won't take your scooter again, Eddie said with an apologetic smile. I haven't got it anymore. I painted it pink and gave it to Rosita. But I can make a new scooter, Morris said. I promised Rosita that I won't be mean again. Everyone can have a go on my new scooter when it's finished. Hooray! Bubble shouted. Now would you all like a piece of apple pie? I baked it myself. Morris soon finished the new scooter. He painted it dark green. All the friends gathered in the meadow the next day and took turns to have a go on the two scooters. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Flutter goes skiing. On a winter day, Iris the Ice Beetle invited all her friends to go skiing. Has everyone got skis? she asked. I haven't, said Berry. And I haven't, Leapy the Grasshopper Girl joined in. Neither have I, Flutter the Butterfly added. Then let's make some skis for you. It isn't hard, Iris said with a smile. The friends all joined in. They sawed and sanded thin planks of wood, fixed foot straps to them and made poles for everyone. And the skis were finished by lunchtime. They all walked up the hill together. When they got to the top, they strapped on their skis and put on their ski helmets. Then Iris asked, Does everyone know how to ski? I can teach anyone who doesn't. They all nodded except for Flutter. The little butterfly girl didn't know how to ski, but she didn't say anything. It can't be all that hard. I'll soon get the hang of it, she thought to herself. She only dared whisper the truth to the green grub. Berry was the first to go. Whoopee! He shouted with a broad grin as he sped down the snowy hillside. Dolly came after Berry and then Balthazar, and then the others. Flutter was the last one to set off. She took a deep breath and pushed herself off. The only problem was she didn't know how to stop. She carried on skiing over the next hill, and then the hill after that, until she had skied a very long way away from the others. The little butterfly girl only stopped when she fell over into a big pile of snow. It was a while before the others realised that Flutter was missing. Flutter doesn't know how to ski, the green grub eventually told them. She can't ski, they all asked in surprise. This was her first time. She was very nervous, but she didn't dare to mention it. Oh, I'm frightened that something terrible has happened to her. The friends set off to search for Flutter. Dr. Owl was flying past, and he spotted Flutter in the snow below. Flutter, what happened to you? he asked. I couldn't stop, and I fell over in the snow. I really hurt myself. I thought I'd never be able to stop. I don't want to ski again, Flutter sobbed. Dr. Owl felt very sorry for the little butterfly girl, so he put her on his back and took her to his house. I'll bandage you up and then I'll take you to Iris's house. I'm sure the others will be looking for you, Dr. Owl said in a reassuring voice. The little friends frantically searched around, but they couldn't find Flutter anywhere. They walked sadly back to Iris's house. But Flutter was waiting for them when they arrived. They were overjoyed. Hooray! Are you all right, Flutter? Tell us what happened to you. 
Dolly told her. Flutter told them the whole story from beginning to end. So you don't know how to ski, Iris asked in surprise. I'll teach you. You'll soon learn how to turn and stop, and you'll be able to ski down even the steepest hills. Thank you, the butterfly girl said with a smile. Iris started to teach Flutter to ski the very next morning. By the end of the first day, the little butterfly girl could ski down small hills and stop safely at the bottom. Look! Flutter can ski! This calls for a celebration! Stanley shouted, and he started to play a tune on the icicles. The others sang and danced around the happy little butterfly.